so um, just a little bit more about us. We are a community legal uh, service that is dedicated to helping children and young people in Australia and their supporters and advocates to find legal solutions to their problems. Um, our help is totally cost-free and completely confidential. Um, we help clients uh, and we will continue to help clients with issues such as uh, workplace entitlements, relationship and domestic issues, violence and harm, abuse and discrimination, fines, Centrelink payments, and the list very much goes on. You're most welcome to scan the QR code on the slide if you'd like our legal assistance and support with any of your issues. Um, now I will uh, hand over to Anastasia who will uh, explain a bit more about um, a service which we have recently launched, the Young Workers' Rights Service. Hey, thanks, Sean. Yeah, so the Young Workers' Rights Service is now part of Youth Law Australia's um, legal advice. Um, and this is a service that's been funded by the Fair Work Ombudsman's Community Engagement Team in recognition that young workers are particularly vulnerable in the workplace. They're unlikely to know their rights. They're susceptible to exploitation. There's often um, lots of uh, students um, or international students who are new to the country who uh, are, are studying and working and trying hard to make ends meet in the best way that they can. And they're often desperate to stay in the country um, and putting up with um, exploitative conditions. So because this is um, well recognised, um, the Fair Work Ombudsman is supported Youth Law Australia to provide specific, free, confidential legal advice, information and support to young people and their supporters on all types of workplace matters um, and to, to really help young people understand their rights at work. So you can see that we've got a list here of all the types of matters we might um, see at the Young Workers' Rights Service. This isn't a complete list. Um, like I said, it's basically, if it's got anything to do with work, um, we're keen to hear about it and keen to offer informa information, advice and support. So um, a, a very common thing that people want to know about is a pay, whether they're getting paid correctly, if they've been underpaid, uh, what they can do about it and that's where what we're going to focus on today in this particular session so that people get a bit of a better sense of um, how the pay how pay works how it's set and how they can work out what they should be getting paid and what to do about it if they're if they're not getting paid properly um, we will also help people with uh, understanding other aspects of their their employment situation including their conditions such as breaks leaves flexible work arrangements, um, safety at work, workplace injuries, um, um, bullying, harassment, nitpicking, um, sexual harassment at work, domestic violence and its impact in a workplace. Um, th this, is, this, is, uh, this is an example of something that might be affecting work but not necessarily coming, coming from work. So like, like I said, we're keen to help young people in the workplace. Um, uh, and so if, if they're experiencing factors outside the work that are impacting on work, that's something we'd love to help with. Um, of course, um, terminations, dismissals, um, resignations, um, discrimination uh, are all parts of work, workplace matters that we can help with and help people understand about. Um, and also apprenticeships and traineeships are obviously something that's going to particularly affect young people. Like I said, we're free and confidential service helping young people, but we're also keen to hear from people who are helping young people, such as a parent or a school counsellor or a community leader or an older colleague. So often um, an older colleague might be aware that other young people in their workplace are being exploited and they're they're very welcome to give us a call and we can give that person information that might assist young young workers. So really the message that we want to get through to everybody is um, contact us where we're, we're keen to hear um, from, from young people and people assisting young people to really get the message out there to young people about their rights at work.
Great, thanks, Anastasia. And as we alluded to earlier, you are most welcome to scan the QR code at the top um, of the slide there um, to uh, get a link to our website. And so you can commence the process of um, seeking our legal assistance and getting our help. Um, so now to turn our attention to um, a particular um, case study, which sort of emerged as a bit of a bombshell story in Australian media, uh, media some years ago, um, and certainly not the first and likely won't be the last um, of its kind where a powerful business, a very recognised brand name, has been found to have rampantly exploited the work, uh, sorry, the workers' rights of um, many um, vulnerable people within its business. Um, and as we can see in the, in the final dot point on that slide, um, after this investigation process um, was finalised, um, the amount uh, in, involved, um, the quantity of underpayments was to the tune of beyond $176 million, um, and it involved over 4,000 employees of 7-Eleven. Um, so some of the tactics that 7-Eleven um, engaged in when it was underpaying its, its workers um, were to falsify some employment records um, and pay only half the hours um, to the particular worker. Um, they also characterised some employment as training, um, essentially perpetually, um, so as to avoid having to pay the worker the amount to which they would otherwise be entitled to. And there was a significant degree of coercion and blackmail of 7-Eleven workers in that many were visa holders and international students, and a condition of their visa was that they couldn't work beyond 14 hours a week. Now, they were often requested and demanded uh, to work beyond 14 hours. Um, and when the particular workers uh, queried um, the amount that they were taking home in terms of their pay packet, the 7-Eleven franchisees um, would often threaten them. They'd say that they would report the fact that they'd breached the terms of their visas to the immigration authorities um, and that the worker would potentially be deported as a function of that. So once the investigation was essentially finalised into 7-Eleven underpayment scandal, um, many student workers reported a reluctance to, um, to get in touch with um, groups that could have assisted and advocated on their behalf because they were concerned that um, another government regulator um, would look into their situation and they may ultimately face deportation. Um, so there are a number of key issues that international workers um, faced um, that facilitated this sort of underpayment scandal. Um, and Anastasia will speak to us about what some of those uh, conditions were. Yeah, so the first one is that a, a lot of the international students and visa holders might not know the system, they don't um, necessarily trust the government, um, they don't know that the authority, such as the Fair Work Ombudsman, even exists or what they do. Um, they don't necessarily have any idea that there is a, a, a basic minimum wage or basic minimum conditions as set out in the national employment standards. So um, if they don't know the system and they're putting up with, uh, with exploitation. Um, often they're desperate to stay in the country, to, to stay and work, and um, they're unlikely to complain because they, they, they want to stay for as long as they can in the country. Um, often they don't speak English, so when the employer says something to them like, well, you're a foreigner, I only have to pay you uh, $15 an hour, they, they, they might tend to believe it and, and, and not check that out. Sometimes they might not understand the different ways of working, um, but the difference between an, an employee uh, and an independent contractor. And when they're asked to you know, sign here, please, or provide such and such a number or contact the ATO and get an ABN, um, you know, that they just do what it takes to, to, to get pay coming in without actually checking whether that's, that's, that's the correct way of doing it. They might not know that you know, when an employer asks for an ABN, Australian business number, that usually the intent is that that person is, is retained as an independent contractor, not as an employee, and that this may be um, a way of, of getting the employee, employee, I use that in inverted commas, to, to work for them for a, a, an amount less than the minimum uh, wage. So that all that complexity is complex and, and, and um, young people, um, let alone young international students and, and, and people who are culturally and linguistically diverse may not know these, these complexities. And um, we're here, like I said, to, to help. Um, we'll give our, share our contacts. We're, we're here to, to help people in that situation understand the system and it can be complicated. Um, often people just put up with a, 
you know, uh, the exploitation for a short time and then if it all gets too bad and they leave Australia, um, it all gets left behind. So employers, dodgy employers are aware of this and that's why exploitation um, can occur. Great, thanks Anastasia. Um, so before we turn our attention to actually determining the precise rate um, that you as an employee are entitled to um, within the industry that you work, we'll just touch on some of the lessons that we've learned from this particular scandal involving 7-Eleven. And that is that the business size, um, the notoriety of the business and the commercial success that it has enjoyed are by no means guaranteed against sort of widespread breaches of workplace laws that we've seen in this instance. And nor is um, uh, ubiquity or how common the particular business is, given that 7-Eleven is one of the most recognisable brands in the country. Um, we also see the commitment, uh, the deliberate commitment displayed by the employer to ensure that the worker remains exploited, such as falsifying those employment records, intimidation tactics, threats to international workers and fear mongering. Um, and just as an aside, it should be noted, and perhaps this is applicable to some of our audience today, that the hospitality industry is uh, particularly well known for breaching labour laws. Um, there are certainly cultural issues within the hospitality industry um, and exploitation uh, has occurred within that industry and will seemingly continue to occur, um, given that hospitality accounts for approximately 30% of all um, investigation into this space. Um, so um, we will now turn our attention to these documents that are called modern awards. And Anastasia will absolutely extrapolate on what that term means, given that it's um, perhaps not the language that we're all used to. Um, and after that, we will navigate through um, one of these documents because they contain um, the exact amount uh, as a minimum rate that you would be entitled to, depending on the industry or the workplace in which you work. So let's go, Anastasia. Great. So you can see on that slide there, awards and enterprise agreements. Now, there's a bit of uh, unusual language, so I just want to just explain what that is. Um, awards is is the term for documents that outline um, basic uh, terms and conditions of employees and their rights and responsibilities, things like pay, leave, um, uh, classifications and things like that. And th that they, awards uh, cover employees' basic rights uh, across different industries, for example, um, there's the Social and Community Services Award, there's the um, Clark's Award, there's the um, Restaurant Industry Award. So you can see different, there's the Hospitality Industry Award, there's, um, there's different awards for different industries and they'll set out a set of basic minimum standards and those standards of the awards become legal documents because they are, um, they are scrutinised and authorised by the, by the Fair Work Commission. So the, the Fair Work Ombudsman page, which we'll show you in a minute, has a list of all the various awards. So if you're not sure which one you come under, you can have a look at the list and, and, and try and work it out. It's not always easy, as you'll see, it's, it can be complicated. Again, that's where we're here to help. The Fair Work Ombudsman's also here to help and, and they can, the Fair Work Ombudsman and we can work together to help an individual work out what award covers their particular job at what level should they be paid? What's their classification? At the end of the day, they want to know what, what's the basic minimum pay or what are my leave entitlements? What breaks can I take? This will usually be set as a minimum in an award. An enterprise agreement is a, a document that sets out the, the basic conditions of, um, that covers a particular employer. Now, not all employers have an enterprise agreement. Um, you can check whether your employer has an enterprise agreement by contacting Fair Work or us. Um, and, and an enterprise agreement is when um, the employees and the employer have come together to make an agreement with terms with the employees that are better off overall than what was provided for in the, the relevant industry award. So this gets tested, uh, checked by the Fair Work Commission and authorised, um, and it replies to a, a particular business um, or organisation, 
they've got an enterprise agreement. You can you can check that out. So we're, 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 I'll just move, I think now, hand over to Sean and he'll he'll tell you all about Diana. Great, thanks Anastasia. So to really um, sort of elucidate and uh, facilitate our, um, our promised demonstration as to how you can determine exactly how much you are entitled to as a minimum rate, um, we will all together be representing a, a friend of ours, Diana, who is an international student from Peru. Um, she is working in a restaurant called Guerreros, which is a restaurant that specialize, specializes in delectable Peruvian cuisine uh, and makes the best Lomo Saltado in town, I'm told. Um, Diana is 23 years old. She's a student. Um, she is employed as a casual worker. It says so on her contract. Um, and she works Monday and Wednesday nights after her university classes. So she's been working now in the restaurant for four months. Um, and she typically removes food plates, sets and wipes down tables, uh, cleans and tidies areas of the restaurant. So Diana is concerned that she is not being paid the right amount. Um, so she has contacted us because she would like our assistance in determining that she is indeed being paid the amount that she is entitled to. Now we've determined um, that Diana is a kitchen hand as a function of the facts that we just spoke about. Um, which means that she would be covered by the Restaurant Industry Award. Now, to give you um, a run through as to exactly how you can navigate one of these award documents, I will just shift our attention over to this Restaurant Industry Award. Here we are. So as we see at the top, and it's relatively easy to access these, you can do so through the Fair Work website. More on this in a minute. Um, this is the Restaurant Industry Award. We can see that it includes all of the amendments up to the 26th of March uh, this year, which was within a month ago. And Diana is concerned about the rate that she is receiving. So on, in the left-hand pane, we have the various clauses um, that uh, together comprise this particular award and the detail is on the right-hand side. So if we navigate down to the clause that is responsible for minimum rates, we'll see that that's a clause 18. And the first thing that we'll notice is that there is this table three, um, which gives a breakdown of the minimum hourly rate, weekly rate, employee stream and grade and employee classification. Now, Diana is initially a little bit overwhelmed because she doesn't know which level um, pertains to her particular employment. She's not sure whether she's introductory level one, two, et cetera, um, what this employee stream and grade necessarily means and therefore which rate um, is applicable to her situation. So to help Diana navigate through the complexity, um, we will scroll down to schedule A, which um, gives us the classification structure. We'll click on this. We'll notice that there's an introdu introductory level explanation at the top here, um, which states that an employee may be at an introductory level for a period of up to three months. Um, we notice that uh, the, grade, the, the definition of grade one is provided um, given the tasks that a grade one food and beverage attendant would ordinarily perform. We can notice that a grade two employee or food and beverage attendant would perform uh, slightly more difficult duties or um, perhaps an upgrade in duties and uh, so on through the grades. Now, given that we just spoke about the material facts, um, we are constantly aware that Diana uh, picks up glasses, sets and wipes down tables, removes food plates, etc. So the most um, fitting uh, grade um, with reference to the tasks performed by Diana, Diana is indeed grade one. Given that she has been uh, working for Guerreros for more than four months, she would have passed the introductory period. Um, so with this in mind, we'll scroll back to the minimum rates section, which is at 18. And um, we will toggle to the food and beverage attendant grade one box. Um, we will see that it corresponds to level one. And we will therefore know that Diana is entitled to $20.41 as a minimum rate. But wait, I hear you say, Diana was a casual employee. What is the significance of this? Well, when we scroll up, to clause 11, we will see that casual employees um, are afforded a casual loading rate of an additional 25%. Now this is to compensate the casual employee for some of the entitlements that they don't receive as a function of not being a part 
part-time or full-time employee. So um, Anastasia has very kindly performed the calculations for us. And we are aware that, we are aware that 25% of that $20.41 is $5.10. So we'll need to add this to the minimum rate that Diana would receive here. And when we perform that calculation, it would become $25.51. Now, we'll just touch briefly on penalty rates, which is at clause 24. If Diana were to work um, on Monday or Wednesday nights beyond 10 p.m., she would be entitled to an additional $2.31 per hour as a casual employee um, beyond her base rate and the casual loading rate. Should she work beyond midnight to 6 a.m., she would be entitled to an additional $3.46 um, for those particular hours worked. And we'll just quickly touch on junior rates as well, which is under clause 18. Had Diana been under the age of 20, she would have been entitled to a minimum percentage of those rates that we've just calculated, depending on exactly what her age was. Um, Anastasia, was that all a bit overwhelming? What did you think? Sean, I think you're a bit of a genius um, sifting through that. Like, I mean, it, there's a lot of toggling, isn't it? Up and down. And I mean, I can see that the, the, the award is, is complicated and it's got all the details in it, um, but th there's got to be an easier way. Well, I'm very glad that you asked Anastasia because I'm, I'm uh, very happy to inform you that indeed there is an easier way. <sighs> Uh, to navigate through one of these. So um, uh, let me let me show you how to do that, if you don't mind. Fantastic. So if we toggle to the uh, pay and conditions tool function of the Fair Work website, which is accessible at calculate.fairwork.gov.au, we can jump into pay calculator. And this is probably a more user friendly of doing what we've just manually done and working our way through the award. So again, we will represent Diana. We're aware that she's an employee. She's unsure about her pay rates. We know which award applies to Diana. We know that it is the Restaurant Industry Award. So we'll select that from this drop-down menu. Um, we know that Diana is not a trainee. She's not eligible for a supported wage and nor is she an apprentice. Um, we determined earlier that Diana was a food and beverage attendant grade one, though if you're unsure about this, it might be worth having this discussion with your employer or otherwise getting in contact with us and we can perhaps help you determine which level is applicable to your role. Um, we know that Diana is a casual employee because it says so in her contract. And we're aware that she is 23 years and older. Well, she's 23 years old. Um, so fortunately, this particular tool will do all of the arithmetic for us. So we won't need to rely on Anastasia's expert mathematical skills in this instance. Well. Um, and we can see that her hourly pay rate is the same uh, figure that we calculated earlier manually. And it will even provide us with a breakdown as to why that's the case. Um, she's entitled to that $20.41 as a base rate, plus the additional $5.10 as a casual employee, equating to $25 and 51 cents. Um, so that is probably a more user-friendly of um, navigating these awards. Um, and we can absolutely help you, uh, you know, wade through the awards and cut through the complexity or use this particular tool, um, should you like to get our assistance with that. Um, now I'll hand back over to Anastasia, who will tell us a little bit more about Diana's situation. Also, as an aside, this is Lomo Saltado that um, Diana prepares at Guerrero's. It is absolutely delicious, and I recommend that we all try it. Wow. Over Zoom? <laughs> Why <Maybe>. not? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds about a great way, to, great way for the diet. Thanks, thanks, Sean. Um, yeah, so, so you, if Diana is concerned that she's being paid less than $25.10, you said, yeah? That's her basic, that, that's what we, you know, we, we decided that that's what she should be paid as a casual rate, but that didn't include necessarily the penalty rate. So that'll, penalty is a funny word, isn't it, Sean? But, but it means basically if you've, if you've worked sort of the unusual hours or the inconvenient hours, the, the employer has to pay a little bit more to compensate for that. 
So if she's if she's concerned, perhaps maybe maybe you know, Sean, she's being paid at that base rate, but she's not being paid the penalties. And so she could she she might be you know slowly slowly two dollars thirty two an hour. It's going to add up, right? So 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 she could come to us, or she could look up that that packed award and decide, okay, she's not being paid. You know what she should be. You know it's only partly right. So what's she going to do? Okay. Well, the first thing is that you know, she might want to do something straight away. Yeah. Or she might be a little bit concerned and she want, might want to get a bit of advice about it. Mm -hmm. um, the, the main thing that we, we want to tell her is that, you know, she needs to be paid at least the minimum in the award because that's the, that's the basic legal minimum. Yeah. Um, she could, we could, we could help her. Yeah. So she knows exactly what she's, she should be getting. And then she has a number of options, yeah? She can either sit and do nothing and just take, take the low pay, yeah? She might, there might be reasons she wanted to do that, but at least she'll be informed that, 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 that she's got an entitlement um, to more. And when she's ready, when and if she's ready, we, we can help her. So we could, do, we could speak to the employer directly, or she could. We could help her write a letter to the employer, or we could, um, pointing out um, the, you know, what the award is and the basic minimums. Um, you know, it, what, the important thing to know is that Diana might, this might not even occur to Diana, you know, until she, if, if, a few years down the track, she might remember, oh, you know, I used to work for this great, you know, they made this great Loma Soltado, but um, you, what do you mean that I work late hours? You know, she might have a conversation and realise that, that actually she'd been underpaid. So it's not too late. You've got six years under the, under the, um, under this system, under the fair work system to do something about it. So even if it's an old job, um, even if she's not working there anymore, she could still um, point this out to the employer. If the employer says, um, you know, sorry, we've moved on, we, you know, no, we don't care about you anymore, then she can make a complaint to the Fair Work Ombudsman either directly or through us. Um, so, so there are things she can do and she doesn't have to necessarily do them straight away. We understand that people might, you know, life's busy and things might slip them by for a while. So if, if, if it, she does notice and she's still working there, um, she can make a complaint uh, to, to the employer or she can draw it to their attention if it becomes a problem. If the employer says something like, uh, well, you know, we don't pay penalty rates because we're, a, you know, we're a, we're a small business. Um, so if you don't want to work here um, for what we're offering, then, then see you later. Uh, this is actually against the law. So um, she, you can't be um, terminated or adversely treated by your employer for exercising your workplace right. Um, to, to, to be paid at least the basic minimum. This is a workplace right and exercising your workplace rights is a, is a, protect, is a protected action under, under the law, under, under the Fair Work Act. So the employer can't dismiss you for exercising your workplace right um, or for making a complaint to the Fair Work Ombudsman um, because it puts them in trouble or something like this. So if that's happened, then you know that's, that's against the law and there are protections and there's processes that, that Diana could, could take through us or by herself. Um, to to get get um yeah so get redressed for that yeah um, uh, yeah we can help with that if that's happening it's obviously a concern for a lot of people and probably a reason why a lot of people don't speak up because they're worried about adverse reactions from their employers but the Fair Work Act's already contemplated this and it's protected so um, there's lots that she can do and lots of protections for her when she decides to when and if she wants to do something about it. Quite right. Um, we can certainly um, foresee and envisage a scenario where the employee might feel that there's a real power imbalance or um, they don't have all the information at their disposal or they're told a particular thing by the employer um, and, and they're just sort of told that this is, this is the situation, this is the case and without questioning it. Um, but we want to ensure that you're all aware that um, should that happen, it's, it's worth questioning it, it's worth being aware of your minimum entitlements. And we are absolutely in a position to ensure that those entitlements are afforded to you. Um, if you're concerned about that. Um, there are some links here as to how Diana could make a complaint to the Fair Work Ombudsman or the Fair Work Commission. Of course, um, she could scan our QR code as well and receive our help directly with this process. Um, so again, we are um, a, a service that is, is able to help anybody under the age of 25 with any legal problem whatsoever. The help is cost-free, judgment-free and totally confidential. And there again is the QR code if you'd like to seek our assistance. Um, now your uh, feedback is incredibly valuable and important to us. 
Um, we will shortly send an email um, to all of the um, su subscribing accounts um, requesting uh, a couple of bits of your feedback if you don't mind providing it uh, based on the session today. Um, and we are more than happy to uh, open the floor to any questions that may have rolled through uh, during the course of the presentation. Um, and we would yeah, be, be more than happy to entertain those uh, now. So uh, have there been any in the chat perhaps, Kate? Yes. So I've had one, I'll put my video back on quickly. Um, so I've had one DM that has come in that has said, well, what about if I have already signed my contract and I realise that in the contract it is less than the award rate? What can I do about that? Great question. Yeah. Yeah. I had this the other day, actually. Somebody asked the same. So um, you can't, a contract can't have a term in there that uh, is less favourable than what's set out in the basic minimum standards of the award because the, the award sets out the legal minimum. So a lot of people might think, oh, well, but I signed a contract, you know, I signed it, you know, that must mean that, you know, I must keep to what I signed, you know, I signed for $15 an hour, surely that's what's binding. But the answer is no, the, the, Fair, Work, um, the Fair Work Act is bigger than the contract and the Fair Work Act says that whatever the minimum rate is in the awards is is the basic legal minimum. So you, you can't, the employer can't contract out of that. And even if you've signed a contract, it's um, what they might say, not worth the paper it's written on. Quite right. It would be, uh, it would have no legal effect as, um, as uh, Anastasia most eloquently puts. You cannot, as an employer, contract out of the uh, minimum rates um, that are applicable um, through the modern award. Um, now, I think another question has come in, if that's right. Um, over the chat function. We'll just um, quickly digest that. Um, shall I read this out? Please. Um, thank you. CC, thank you very much for your question. Um, I think you've asked if um, a, a somebody who is younger than 25, uh, if that um, age catchment is referring to the age when clients come to you. Right. Um, well, um, that's a very good question, CC. Um, I wonder whether um, Kate might be in a position to clarify um so i see that she's 29 now but at the time um of the incident she was uh, perhaps younger than 25 in in this particular case um i think that we would be very um happy to receive um any information from this particular person who was 25 though um uh was involved in some sort of legal scenario when she was younger than 25 um if she wanted to reach out to us we could absolutely advise her further. Um, we could determine whether we are in a position to assist her. Um, and we would definitely encourage her to get in contact with us. Right, yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, um, she was exploited as a, as a young person. That's exactly what we, um, you know, our area of concern. Um, yeah, we'd love to hear from her. And I wonder if there were any other questions um, through the chat or... Otherwise, I'm um, more than happy to contribute via the audio if you'd like. Um, I've had one question about working with Children's Check, but what we might do um, is I might message you separately um, and then we can answer that for you um, just so that we give you the right advice. Um, and if anyone else has any questions that they want to ask, please feel free. You can either ask of mute um, and if there is anyone who wants that legal advice now um, I'm getting a couple of direct messages I strongly encourage you to scan into our code and send us a question but if not what I would do is I'm going to send you a quick message um, as soon as we wrap up um, and we can give you advice about your individual questions as well we just want to um, make sure that we treat your situation as confidential um, but we're very happy to help All right, if there's not any other questions, um, we might wrap up. Great, thanks so much for joining us today, everyone. Very, very much look forward to seeing you at the next edition. Um, this is obviously the first instalment of our webinar series, so we hope that you can attend next time. And thanks so much, uh, Anastasia, for all of your expert insights today. Thanks, should we go and get some lunch? Maybe some Loma Soltado. <laughs> Brilliant idea.
Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye.